Today we're going to be going over how to pre-trip a vehicle. I know a lot of people have a lot of questions about getting their CDL, uh, what all it takes. So I'm going to do a little series, I guess you will, on the actual process from start to finish. But today we're just going to be doing the actual pre-trip inspection. We'll be covering the truck, trailer, inside, uh, air leak down test, and then we'll actually go into the skills portion. Now it's not all going to be in this video. This video is going to be mainly just the pre-trip itself. You will have to check from state to state. It may differ just a little bit, but for the most part, everything that you do here, again, this is out of South Carolina. So everything that you're doing here is going to be relatively the same per state. So let's get started. All right. So from starting inside, the first thing that you're going to do <coughs> is make sure as soon as you get in the truck, you take your seat belt and then you put it on and that you actually when you put it in you give it a tug to make sure this fastly secured okay you're gonna hear a lot of repetitive stuff today but you have to make sure it's not that you don't know it but you have to show that examiner that you are 100% confident in what you're doing and what you're talking about okay it's gonna be the biggest key um, a lot of people some people may differ have different opinions on that but a huge thing for mine whenever I went and did my testing was its confidence level. So like I said, first thing you're going to do is get inside the cab, put your seatbelt on, and turn the switch to on. Don't start the engine yet. All your lights should come on. And what you're going to do is you're going to point to every light. So when the ABS light came on, you're going to tell the examiner the ABS light is working correctly. With this, this is an automatic, but don't worry, we have manuals that we will go over as well. Um, so what you're going to do is instead of depressing the clutch and ensuring that it's in neutral, come down here, ensure the transmission's in neutral. Uh, at this point, you're going to tell the examiner a safe start, excuse me. Then you're going to crank the truck. It's a little cold so it might take a second the voltmeter say that it's rising to the proper pressure and operating correctly if you don't have one uh, with this one it's going to be digital uh, part of the steering wheel in the dash itself so you have to scroll through pull it up and you want to make sure that you touch and that you're pointing to all these different gauges okay going to go to the temperature gauge I'm gonna zoom in so you can see a little better go to the temperature gauge say it's rising and operating properly proper working condition this is the voltmeter it's in the proper area and it shows it's charging go down to the temperature gauge your gauge say the temperature gauge is operating properly and rising to the proper temperature the air pressure gauge again you see that you have two of the actual here but again it's got a gauge so if you don't have the digital dash gauges then you can go through and just point to these but if you have this it's obviously going to show them that you know what you're talking about that you're familiar with the truck and again that's what they're looking for there's the air pressure gauge say so they are rising to the proper pressure which is 120 to 140 psi Next thing you're going to do, roll down the window, point to the mirror, touch it on the driver's side, and point to the other mirror on the passenger side. Say my mirrors are clean and adjusted properly from the vehicle. You're going to touch the windshield. Say the windshields are clean, have no obstructions, no damage, and no illegal stickers. You're going to point to the wipers. Say the arms and blades are securely mounted, are not damaged and operate smoothly. Roll this wind up so you can hear me. You're going to point to the wiper, say the arms and blades are securely mounted, are not damaged, and operate smoothly. You're going to turn them on, turn them off. Say the washers are working properly. You're going to turn it on and turn it off. You're going to blow the air horn. Air horn works. 
you're gonna blow the city horn say the city horn works and with this this is gonna be the air horn this is gonna be the city horn again you're gonna come back down to the seat belt say it latches and adjust properly and it's securely mounted and fastened it's not frayed cracked or damaged and it's properly adjusted for me at that point you're gonna go through and say I have a fully charged and properly rated fire extinguisher three red reflective triangles I some places may get you to actually step out of the cab and go to the dog box which is on the side uh, where the reflective triangles are they may or may not be and also say you have spare fuses they would be in the side box all right obviously if you don't know fire extinguisher is right here okay you're gonna be want to make sure that you're familiar with all those different locations From there, what you're gonna do is turn turn all your lights on, as well as turn your hazard lights on, okay? And then you go outside of the cabin. What we're gonna do, though, before we get out, is go through each one of those inside. You're gonna turn your left turn signal on. Let's say the left, indicate, left indicator light is working. Turn the right turn signal on. Say the right turn indicator light is working. Turn on your four-way flashers. Say both indicators work. Again, you're going to turn on your lights. And then you're going to turn on your high beams. Say both indicator lights are working and operating properly. Again, if you have ABS, you're going to want to say, even if it's not showing up, you're going to say, you're testing for the ABS light and tell the examiner that it's operating properly. Then you come down here, turn on the heater. Make sure you hold your hand over it like this. Put hands on the vent and then on top of the dash of the defroster. And you physically want to show them that you're feeling for air. Once you feel air coming out from there, you're going to say that it's in proper operating condition. Alright, the so next part is going to be going in to the park brake check. This is going to be going into the park brake check, alright? Do not have your foot on the brakes while doing the park brake test. Say, I am now going in to test my parking brakes. You're going to push in the red button. Put the vehicle into a low forward gear. So automatic you would hit drive. Manual you're obviously going to go into first. Say the tractor parking brake is holding. And all you're going to do is let off the brake. You don't go anywhere. It's working. So then you're going to say the parking brake is holding properly. You're going to want to give it just a little bit of throttle to where you're going to feel that slight tug because the examiner's going to want to feel that. Next thing you're going to do is what you're going to go into is apply the trailer brakes. So you're going to pull the red button back out and release the parking brakes, which is going to be the yellow button. You're going to push it in, put it back into the low gear if it's if you came out of it. And you're going to want to let the examiner feel a slight tug again. You feel that tug, and you're going to let them know the trailer brakes are holding and in proper operating condition. You're going to go into checking service brakes at this point. So what you're going to do is say I would check my service brakes by pulling forward at 5 miles an hour and apply my service brakes. I would check to see if my vehicle stops and also that it does not pull to the other side when brakes are applied. What you're going to go into now is the air brake test which are known as lab or leak alarm button as it is abbreviated it must be done exactly as listed below. If you make a mistake, you must ask to begin again. Uh, in situation or in circumstances in South Carolina, you're only allowed one start over. A lot of people with the class that I was going through, this is what messed them up. Uh, because they would be so worried about everything else and be so adamant that they had to have everything 100% perfectly correct on the entire truck. They understand that you're going to make some mistakes, but with 
the lab test, you 100% want to make sure that you get this right. So what you're going to go into now <clears throat> is the air leakage test. You want to make sure that you get this correct. The vast majority of anybody that failed in the class that I was going to, this was what got them. You must tell the examiner that my air pressure is a governor cutoff, which is 120 to 140 psi. If it'll focus. And you can see that it's sitting right at 120 and that it's holding. And so once it does that, you're going to turn off the engine. Make sure that you leave it in the run position, though. You're going to push in both, both buttons. And you're gonna hold your foot on the brake for one minute. A lot of times you're gonna simulate this one minute, but that you, by the end of it, they're gonna say at the end of the minute, say it lost no more than four PSI and one minute for a combination vehicle. Once that's done, you're gonna to begin to fan off the pressure. Say low, war low air warning light should come on at approximately 60 pounds. You saw it. it says working properly. Continue fanning it off. At approximately 40 to 20 psi, both buttons will pop out. And you saw that they did pop out. Now, what you're going to do from there, start the truck back up and bring the air pressure. Once your air pressure is back up, at that point you're going to go back through your light or get checking the lights again. So what you're going to do though is you're going to remain inside of the cab and you're going to have the instructor step out. Now you must tell the examiner to please check your lights. You must tell them which lights you want checked because they're going to be checking all this stuff off on a little board. You're going to go going to want to go over your high and low beam headlights, your left and right turn signals, your four-way flashers. The clearance lights, which are up top, the brake lights, and tail lights on the tractor and trailer. While this is going on, you're going to want to watch the examiner and tell them which lights you wish for them to check. Because if you don't tell them, they're not going to do it for you. From here, this is where we're going to go into starting outside of the cab. So from here, they've already checked all the lights that you've told them about. You're going to pop the hood because at this point, you're going to be getting out of the truck. Make sure before you get out that you turn the truck off, take the key out of the ignition, and leave it on the ground or put it in your pocket. The reason being is you want to you want to have make sure that there's no way that anybody's going to get inside of the truck. Nobody's going to start it. Nobody's going to drive over it. Nobody's going to or nobody's going to drive over you. Run you over. Run them over. Nobody wants to get ran over. All right, so once you're standing outside of the truck, you're gonna to wanna to point to everything, point and touch everything that you're talking about. So from here, you'll see that the passenger side headlights clean and clear, free from any obstructions in proper operating condition. Driver side headlights clean and clear and in proper operating condition, free from any obstructions. The grill's fine. Your mirrors, both passenger and driver side, are clean and clear and in proper operating condition. Now, at this point, <clears throat> you're going to raise the hood. And for me, it was easier to remember starting on the passenger side and covering everything that way. Or starting on the passenger side and covering all those components first. You're gonna come in, you're gonna to point to and say, my water pump's properly mounted, fastened, and secured, no nuts or bolts are missing. There's no more <clears throat> than an inch of play in the belt. The belt's not frayed, cracked, cut. It's free from abrasion in proper operating condition. Um, you're actually gonna to wanna to touch all this stuff and show them that it is securely mounted and fastened and in proper operating condition. 
all your clamps, any hoses, ensuring that your hoses aren't dry, rotted, cut, frayed, cracked, free from any abrasions and in proper operating condition. Your coolant tank, properly mounted, fastened, and secured, is not cracked, leaking, damaged. Um, it's in an improper operating condition. And then from there, you move over to the driver's side. You're going to start with everything, okay? So the easiest thing to start with for me was steering. And I'm going to look at this and reference it just to make sure so this is word for word the exact same things that I used when I passed the test. The steering box, steering box is secure the mounted, not leaking, missing no bolts, nuts, washers, or cotter keys. You're going to touch the hoses. Power steering hoses are not damaged and are not leaking. Steering linkage from the steering box to the wheel touch all linkages, steering shaft, gearbox, pitman arm, drag link, and tell them that they are not worn or cracked, have no loose or worn joints, or sockets, and are missing no nuts, bolts, washers, or cotter keys. This is going to be your pitman arm, steering link, any of the cotter keys. From there, you're going to go into the suspension components. You're going to lean over the front tire, touch the front spring mount, and then the rear spring mount. The front spring mounts and the U-bolts are not cracked or broken and have no missing or damaged bushings or have broken loose or missing bolts. They are securely mounted. Point to the leaf springs. Make sure that you touch those. They're not broken, cracked, shifted, or missing. Point to the shock absorber. Shock absorber is securely mounted, not damaged, and not leaking. Then you're going to go into the brakes. The brake hose is securely connected at both ends. It's not cracked or worn and is not leaking. Touch the brake chamber. It's not dented or cracked, securely mounted, and it's not leaking. Point to the slack adjusters, which is going to be right here. You're going to push the rod and say they're securely mounted and have no broken loose or missing parts. Say if the brakes were released, the push rod will move no more than one inch when pulled by hand. Otherwise, the brakes were set, we would look to use to see if the push rod and slack adjusters are at a 90 degree angle. to the brake drums, have no loose or missing bolts, are not cracked or broken, have no grease, oil, or other contaminants on them. The brake linings aren't worn dangerously thin. Then you're going to come into the tires. You're going to start out by touching the sidewall. No bulges, cuts, frays, missing pieces. Um, Mounted, fastened, and secured. Yeah. You're going to come outside, touch the sidewalls of the tires and say they have no cuts, cracks, or bulges. Rub the tire tread. The tread is worn evenly and has no less than 4 seconds of an inch tread depth. And that's for the front. Once you get to the trailer or into the back, you're allowed 2 30 seconds. You check that. Because obviously, I mean, you can see, but you take an actual gauge and it'll tell you. The rim is not bent or damaged and has no weld repairs. You're going to want to go through and physically touch all the lug nuts. They say they're present and tight. They are not cracked or distorted. I see no shiny threads or rusty trails to indicate looseness. There are no cracked or distorted bolt holes. You're going to point to the hub oil cap on the steering tire axle and say it is securely mounted and not leaking. I would check the oil through the looking glass. It's a little dirty, but you can see in there. Alright, so from there you're going to move to the door area. Once you get to the door area, this small, I don't even know if you can see it, but this small amber light right here, you're going to make sure that you want to tell them it's properly mounted, fastened, and secured in proper operating condition. You're going to 
open and close the door. Like I said, if you want to open and close the door, door opens and closes from the outside. The hinges are secure and the door seal is intact. Mirrors and brackets are not damaged and are mounted securely with no loose fittings. You're going to touch and kind of pull on the steps and say they're securely bolted, solid and free of any foreign objects. Coming back here, next thing you're going to point out is the fuel tank. It's properly mounted, fastened, and secured. It's not leaking in any way. And you're going to want to touch the fuel cap and ensure that it is actually on there and not loose. The part you're going to go into is the catwalk area, which is here. Say so the steps are securely bolted, solid, and clear of objects. Catwalk is solid, has no foreign objects, and is securely bolted to the frame. You're going to point to the airlines. You're going to have your emergency, your service lines. Emergency is red, service is blue. And then this the green hose here, that's going to be your electrical connection, which go into the glad hands on the trailer. Say so they're properly mounted, fastened, and secure, free from any cuts, breaks, pinch, uh, damage in proper operating condition. As you can see, inside the actual glad hand, there's these rubber seals. You're gonna wanna ensure that they're in there. They're properly mounted, fastened, and secured in proper operating condition. The safety latches are securely locked to both ends on the electrical line, and the electrical line is not cut, chafed, spliced, tangled, not dragging the catwalk, and no steel braid is showing. going to point to the drive shaft if you can see it and I'm point to the drive shaft and say it has not bent or cracked and the couplings are secure with no foreign objects in them and, and are securely mounted on both ends point to the header board on the trailer point to the header board of the trailer and say it has no holes cuts cracks or bulges and will hold the cargo clearance lights on the header board are the proper color Amber. There's the very top of there near that corner. Just secure the mounted to both ends. And in proper operating condition. The air release line from the sliding fifth wheel is properly mounted, fastened, and secured so no cuts, frays, or cracks. And then from here. What you're gonna do is pick pick whichever axle that you want to do. You're only gonna have to do in South Carolina. You only have to do one of them, okay? But you need to make sure that you explain to them that whatever you do for this side or this axle, you would do for this one. Whatever you do for this side of the truck, you're going to do the exact same on that side of the truck. Just so that you can see a little bit better, all the components are gonna be right inside of here. Okay, so you're going to point to or touch the front spring mount and the rear spring mounts, which is going to be right here. And those are your U-bolts. Point to or touch the front spring mounts and rear spring mounts. The U-bolts and the airbag mounts are not cracked or broken, have no broken, loose, or missing bolts, no missing or damaged bushings, and are securely mounted. Point to the leaf springs and the torque rods. Are not broken, cracked, shifted, or missing. Point to the shocks. Are securely mounted and are not leaking. Again, that's your shock. Point to the airbags. They are not damaged and are not leaking. Point to the control arms and say that they are securely mounted and not damaged. The brakes, the brake hoses are not damaged, cut, leaking, frayed, securely mounted on both ends. Right. Then your brake chamber, it's not dent, cracked, bulged, it's properly mounted, fastened, and secured, it's in proper operating condition. Point to the slack adjusters, and again, say the push rod 
Barely mounted and has no broken loose or missing parts. Say so as the brakes were released, the push rod will move no more than one inch when pulled by hand. Otherwise, if brakes were set, we would look to see if the push rod and slack adjuster are at a 90 degree angle. Coming to the side or the tires, you're gonna physically feel all side, four sides of the firewall or the sidewalls. Look between the tires. Point two and say the bud wheels are evenly spaced. Say and point two, all four tires have an even tread wear of no less than two thirty seconds of an inch tread depth. The valve stem and cap is not missing or broken. I'll check all four tires for proper inflation with a tire gauge. The rims are not bent, damaged, and have no weld repairs. All the lug nuts are present and tight. They are not cracked or distorted. I see no shiny threads or rusty trails that indicate looseness. There are no cracked or distorted bolt holes. The axle seals are not leaking. Then you're gonna be coming to the fifth wheel itself. The apron, which is this. The apron is not bent, cracked, or broken. Is there no gap between the apron and the fifth wheel? The fifth wheel skid plate. The fifth wheel skid plate is securely mounted to the platform, missing no nuts, bolts, or washers, and properly greased. The platform is securely mounted. Missing no nuts, bolts, or washers, or cotter keys, not cracked or broken, and is in the proper position to clear the trailer when turning. The release arm is in the engaged position with the safety latch locked in. The locking pins are locked out. The mounting bolts are all present and tight. And there, gonna go under the truck. Here you're going to say the frame rails and the cross member have no cranks, broken welds or damage and are securely mounted. The lights, the signal brake light, turn signals, four-way flashes and reflectors are the proper color, red, clean and functional. Light is clean and functional. The mud flaps are not damaged and are securely mounted. From here, you're going to come to the landing gear. Point to and touch the landing gear and say it's not damaged, missing no parts, it's in the proper position. Fully raised with the crank handle secured. With adequate spacing between the landing gear and the rear of the truck for turning. Then from here, you're going to walk down the side of the trailer. Be sure to tell the examiner you're looking all the way to the back of the trailer, pointing to the rear while you are inspecting. Say to the examiner there are no cracks, broken welds, holes, or damage to the frame, box, or cross members on the side of the trailer or underneath or holes coming from the floor. to and say the reflective tape is not damaged or missing. You're also going to want to say that this signal light is the proper color, amber, clean, and functional. You're going to go to the rear of the trailer. Sorry. You're going to go to the rear of the trailer. You're going to show them the ABS light is amber in color as well as the other light. Again, the same thing that you did on the axles and the brakes. On the tractor, you're going to come back through and do on the trailer. In case you couldn't see though from up there, this is going to be your airbag. It's going to be your shock. All these hoses or hose lines that you see are all going to be air lines. 
this is your brake chamber. Okay. And if you look, if I can get the camera turned. If you look right there, try to zoom in for you. That little rod that's running right there is going to be your slack adjuster rod. And the piece that's running to is the actual slack adjuster, and that's what controls and applies pressure to air brakes in a tractor trailer. Once you're back here at the back of the trailer, I'm just going to point out that all your lights are in proper operating condition. Your red reflective tape is secured. The latches and hinges are all properly mounted, secured, fastened, not broken or missing any pieces. The doors hold and they'll secure the load. Then you come back down the passenger side. Again, explain to them everything that you did on the driver's side, you would do on the passenger side. Make sure you point out the amber and color marker light there. Proper amount of fastening is secured and in proper operating condition. Coming back up through here, gonna point out your ex your stack, exhaust stack. It's properly mounted, fastened, and secured. There's no broken or missing pieces, no illegal welds, as well as there's no signs of soot trails, which would be black, indicating that you had a leak there. So hopefully that helps some people out. I know there's probably going to be some questions. If you have any questions, feel free to ask. Um, as far as the actual skills portion, we'll go into that uh, in another part of this series. Other than that, that is the pre-trip inspection.